Hey everyone, how's it going? We're going to be talking about some nice, crazy stuff here uh, with Mario 3D All-Stars because a major analyst, one that we follow, one that deals with the MPD group, uh, one that is a very important figurehead in this industry, uh, has some unique thoughts. Well, maybe not unique, but uh, maybe draws attention to how uh, the games inside Mario 3D All-Stars are going to be handled after March 31st of next year. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're also going to mention that, hey, we're giving away two copies of Super Mario 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury. We're also giving away two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe and also a Nintendo Switch, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X or S if that's what you prefer. Uh, links and all of the ways to enter are down in the description. Let's just get right into this video, and yeah, let's head right over to the masterful article. All right, as you can see here, this is on GameDaily.biz, and the analyst we were talking about is none other than Matt Piscatella. That's right, Matt Piscatella of the Nintendo of the MPD. I was about to say Nintendo of the MPD sales reports. Uh, and there's a bunch of stuff uh, that they say in here. Super Mario 3D All-Star snagged the second spot for the month. It's a compilation that, according to the Nintendo, will only be made available for purchase through March of 2021. This marketing strategy of limited availability most certainly helped increase demand. But Piscatella thinks there won't. this won't be the last we see of the three included games. In fact, the success of the collection could also motivate further releases, re-releases. So here's what he said. I don't think these games will disappear. Like what would happen with the old school Disney vault, he said. But I think there may be additional flexibility and buying options. For example, a la carte purchasing options on eShop. The sales of Super Mario 3D All-Stars should provide additional confidence in bringing other legacy titles to new platforms, to say the least. But again, it's Nintendo, so I expect to be surprised. And that's kind of the big thing with Nintendo, is we don't really know uh anything about their mindset when it comes to this stuff like you would think because super mario 3d all-stars was such a big success it would be a shoe in that we will get a zelda 35th collection it would be a shoe in that we would get the metroid prime trilogy next year but again nintendo is a really weird company and i have to wonder if uh, it wasn't for a pandemic would we have even gotten this collection this year or would we have gotten something else i don't know uh after all it's rumored or or kind of you know, hypothesized here that they put together uh, 3D All Stars in about six months, and it's obviously a huge hit for Nintendo and going to continue to sell well this holiday season, likely outpacing Pikmin 3 Deluxe, maybe even outpacing Age of Calamity, which is an actual brand new game. Uh, just because the Musou series tends not to be a massive seller, although we'll see. It's a prequel for Breath of the Wild, has a bit of of a contradicting stuff in it because. Um, there, there's some quotes where Zelda like was unable to participate in battles in Breath of the Wild, and she's going to be battling Age of Calamity. We'll see how they retcon that, but it's going to be an interesting uh, time, to say the least. And seeing these three games available a la carte, I think is what many people expect and are actually maybe upset about, because are they going to be a la carte at 20 bucks a pop on the eShop, or are they going to be a la carte for 30 40 50 even $60 a pop on the eShop because they could get away with that pricing. And then, obviously, uh, people are going to feel a bit slighted if they were unable to pick it up during the uh, during the current time period through March 31st. They might be like, but what do you mean if they couldn't pick it up? Well, what if they don't get a Switch until some point next year because they're a kid and they're waiting for their birthday or they're saving up for it and they didn't get an opportunity to buy 3D All-Stars while it was available. So it, it's it, there's always situations that arrive like that that you have to worry about these limited releases and Nintendo nickel and diming consumers down the road. But obviously the big benefit here that we should be focusing on isn't so much that he feels like the games are going to be a la carte, which yes, like that's a big deal. Uh, it's that you know, Nintendo should look at this as a way to bring more of their games in collection packs because collection packs are massively popular if you grab the right ones and put them together. Uh, as an example, I think, you know, we've talked a lot about the Metroid Prime Trilogy, but why not grab some of the older Metroid, Pro Metroid games and put them together in one collection pack? Uh, I think that would do incredibly well, especially with some up res stuff. Yes, even though some of it's available already in the NES and SNES app, having a larger collection of just Metroid, I think could sell well for 40 to 60 bucks a pop, depending on how many games they want to put in it. I think a collection of a lot of different games could, could actually 
actually uh, do that. In lieu of something like the NES Classic, the SNES Classic, the N64 Classic, they could do, you know, like an N64 collection pack and throw some a whole bunch of stuff together. They could have, how about a, a Donkey Kong Country collection pack that has one through three in it, or maybe, you know, all, the entire series put together for 60 bucks. There's a lot of interesting ways Nintendo could take advantage of these collection packs and make lots and lots of money, even if they want to limit release them for some ungodly reason, because Nintendo uh, likes to, you know, fear of missing out uh, and, and, you know, increase sales uh, sooner, maybe to hit certain sales targets. Like, I find it interesting that the game is going to be done uh, being sold on the eShop and physically at the end of March, because that's literally the end of the fiscal year, which which means Nintendo is pushing sales uh, this fiscal year big to kind of pump their numbers up. So it is what it is. Uh, you guys have to let me know what you think about Nintendo's strategy behind that. What I think is that uh, Nintendo is going to bring these titles back. They're going to nickel and dime us, but I also think they're going to bring more and more collection packs out uh, over the next few years because clearly there's a demand. There's a demand of taking their old games, slapping them in HD through emulation, and giving them to us. I know people want more done. We want full-on remasters. Like, you know, there, there was more effort put in the Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D than there was these games. And yet, Super Mario 3D All-Stars probably outsold Majora's Mask 3D and Ocarina of Time 3D combined. So, clearly, Nintendo knows they can kind of get away with lazier HD up uh ports and just let it be. So, I think we're going to see a lot more of that for N64 GameCube and even Wii games especially. I think we're going to see a lot more of these up collection pack ports happening. And it makes me think, you know, what else could work? Well, obviously for Zelda, it's pretty clear. The Wind Waker and uh, Twilight Princess already have the HD work put into them, so putting them together. And then if you want to put a new game to sweeten the pot, Skyward Sword, just do a, a, a emulator up for that. Yes, it needs a little bit more work. you got to make it work with traditional controls. And that might be one reason why it's not included. And instead we get like Ocarina of Time or something something like that, uh, up in the same way that uh, Super Mario 64 is. But, you know, it's Nintendo, and Nintendo is nothing if not unpredictable. Although, they seem to be doing more predictable things of late. As an example, we're getting a Breath of the Wild prequel, which was unpredictable, but we're getting a Breath of the Wild sequel, which, if you look at the history of Zelda, they don't usually do that. Um, but for other franchises and at any other company that has a massive big success like Breath of the Wild, a sequel is just a given. And that wasn't a given with Zelda because Zelda just jumps all over the timeline all the time uh, with what games they make in different art styles. Uh, whereas other franchises are like, oh, that was big. We didn't make another one. Like, you know, you kind of expect it. Like we had Odyssey hit 18 million, we kind of expect an Odyssey 2 at some point, especially since they didn't do DLC. But they don't. Nintendo's not typically like that. They jump all over the place. So we'll see. Nintendo has been a bit more predictable, uh, which is also a sign that the current president, Shintaro Furukawa, uh, cares much more about the business side of things and taking advantage of uh, what consumers want in the given moment. And that's pretty good signs for consistency at Nintendo because one thing Nintendo has lacked, especially under Satoru Iwata, is consistency. You had the lightning in the bottles with the DS and Wii, but there was a lot of inconsistency towards the end of those, those life cycles of those platforms, inconsistencies with the Wii U and the 3DS, and uh, now you have a new president that's very business-focused uh, and is going to care about the bottom line more and in caring about the bottom line more, going to do things that are going to be more profitable for Nintendo. And when you think about profits for Nintendo, a lot of it's about what are you going to sell a crap load of make more of that uh so that's good news for us because we're going to get more of the games that we want hopefully with that same nintendo seal of quality without sacrificing uh, a lot of things i feel like you know super mario party was great uh, and the best Mario Party we've had in a long time, but clearly there's more they could be doing, especially with the online and giving us, um, you know, more boards to play with. And I'm hoping that they learn off of, you know, kind of making a good Mario Party game again and do it better next time. That's the hope. We'll have to wait and see if they keep um, giving us kind of stunted online and very few maps. That's gonna it's gonna make the series feel stale again. So they got to be careful there. Same with Mario Tennis. They finally nailed the gameplay. Now they got to get the content right with the next one. So there's a lot of things Nintendo needs to do and fix and get better at. But I feel like they have incentive to do so. Uh, just like with Arms. Arms had a great start. Now Arms Two should have almost twice the amount of content. Uh, and I think they can do that. And I think they will do that. So 
They did it with Splatoon 2. So I, I think they're going to keep kind of hitting the ground running uh, with these games and keep giving us what we want. But, yeah, classic games, guys. Uh, kind of kind of crazy. Uh, you know, what kind of collection packs do you guys want to see uh, out there? You know, we know about the Zelda and the Metroid stuff. But beyond those franchises, what collection packs would you like to see? Literally just up in HD, tossed together for 60 bucks and thrown it on Switch. Let me know down in the comments below. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nintendo Rubble Jans from Nintendo Prime. And yes, shout out to Beat em Ups. He's an awesome YouTuber as well. Um, haven't seen a video from him in a few days, but that's okay. He'll be back when he's ready. Thank you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.